फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर बाय नाउ इन द लास्ट फोर वीडियो एपिसोड्स यू ऑल हैव हर्ड एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड कॉमन जीआई सिम्टम्स सच एज वॉमिटिंग डायरिया कॉन्स्टिपेशन एंड इनडाइजेशन द सब्जेक्ट्स विच वेर डेल्ट बाय माय कलीग्स एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई वॉन्ट टू हाईलाइट द इम्पॉर्टेंट मैसेजेस दैट माई कलीग गेव इन दिस डिफरेंट वीडियोज friends remember vomiting is often a multi system disorder when vomiting is an initial presenting symptom almost always it's a gi related till proved otherwise and most commonly it's often a surgical problem than medical problem of course when a vomiting as an initial symptom is transient just for a day or so and then it disappears and the diarrhea starts you know it's a common gastroenteritis and it doesn't pose a big problem to a clinician but if vomiting gets more severe gets persistent and often thereafter in a day or two accompanied with other symptoms such as abdominal distension abdominal pain constipation and sometimes even vomiting which is bile stain you almost have diagnosed a surgical gi problem that is far more common when vomiting is a presenting symptom and obviously you may be facing with pyloric stenosis a very forceful vomiting it could be a gastroesophageal reflux induced vomiting where cough and choking episodes give you an idea about the diagnosis and then of course a lower intestinal obstructions due to various causes having said that the surgical problems are more common don't forget medical conditions which also manifest with a initial symptom of vomiting and they are often due to systems involved other than primary gi for example a person who starts with vomiting but also on direct questioning has a severe anorexia a loss of appetite nausea then you anticipate that is going to be a viral hepatitis similarly many other metabolic problems which may start as vomiting could really be easily missed for example a person who has been chronically sick for a long time not doing too well presents with acute onset of vomiting it could be a chronic renal problem and then of course many times when there is no clue whatsoever it could also be a chronic adrenal problem which is very easily missed however when vomiting often is preceded by many other symptoms which means vomiting is not the initial symptom but it comes a little later in the course of disease it is easy to diagnose as happens with a fever headache followed by vomiting is a classical triad of a meningitis chronic could also be chronic and then that often poses a problem and there you want to make sure that there are no other associated symptoms like a headache gradually worsening it could be a brain tumor or a vertigo associated vomiting which is not rare and so on and so forth finally it's a migraine that also may cause vomiting but of course the headache is the major symptom and the vomiting only ends the episode and the patient often gets relieved so friends vomiting is a multi system problem and try to pick up the possible cause gi as well as extra gi right to begin with so that you can be very rational and excellent and that's what the principle of steer is when you talk about diarrhea it's much more a localized gi problem and almost always you know that when it's a watery diarrhea it's often a viral infection but don't forget even cholera or rarely further a neuroendocrine tumor like a vipoma can cause such a severe watery large volume diarrhea that within few hours the patient can land up with a severe dehydration and shock 
Don't forget these are rare conditions but can easily be missed and could be fatal if not diagnosed properly. Of course, the diarrhea could also be a beginning of an inflammatory disorder. For example, an acute onset high fever with watery diarrhea could make you suspect that it may not be simply a viral infection but in a day or so it would be followed by blood and mucus and with an abdominal cramp tenismus you would have diagnosed it as an acute bacillary dysentery. And of course close to a similar presentation could be an inflammatory bowel disease which is getting more and more common today even in all age groups. So don't forget that blood and mucus in stools is not necessarily a bacterial infection, a dysentery, but it also could be occasionally an inflammatory bowel disease and of course parasitic infections like amoebiasis. A infection like giardiasis often causes with a very large, not so frequent, but a grayish white, very badly smelling stool and therefore you know how the infection is. But rarely diarrhea could be also caused by an extra GI problem such as hyperthyroidism. But it doesn't come just like diarrhea as an only symptom and therefore you are often not worried. But often it could be due to anxiety, due to depression or even due to a stress and often it's referred to as an irritable bowel syndrome. It's again not uncommon at all in all age groups. Occasionally the diarrhea could be small in volume, less frequent but greenish and that would be almost called as a hunger diarrhea in a small infant or it could be a result of an increased peristalsis which does not allow bile to be used and the stool becomes greenish. Having talked about vomiting and diarrhea, French constipation is another common problem and to me that's a very important common symptom today that we see in all age groups. Constipation is a symptom of modern civilization and what does it mean? Because of a not ideal lifestyle, a poor diet, a diet containing of very low fiber content and then a hurried life, often a socioeconomic problems. I think all this modern civilization has led to constipation be a very common problem in the community and friends, constipation is a semi-emergency because if you don't diagnose it early, many times Patients neglect it for a long time and the doctors must address it properly and major part of all the problems is often a non-organic causes. Well, you should rule out organic causes like a lower intestinal obstruction like a Hirschsprung disease or a congenital megacolon. Sometimes the drugs like many cough syrups cause constipation and even depression can be the only cause of constipation. But Almost always, constipation is often functional, habitual constipation because of a poor fiber content of the diet, poor lifestyle, a sleep deprivation, hurried life and many times uh, patients withhold the urge of passing stool for varieties of reasons and therefore constipation becomes an important part. Friends always ask because it's so common. Ask every patient for whatever reason he comes to you, ask for a bowel pattern because constipation must be treated properly and often you need a lot of counselling in terms of diet modification and of course use of some laxatives etc. Having said all these three common symptoms, the most important symptom that is often seen in the community other than constipation is indigestion and friends Indigestion can present as diarrhea, as constipation, as vomiting, as flatulence, as abdominal discomfort, as abdominal distension and it can really present with any kind of a GI problem. We must understand what maldigestion or indigestion means because often these terms are very loosely applied and you know that a process of digestion starts right from the mouth 
when a mechanically the saliva mixes with food and starts the process of digestion then of course a chemical process where an acid in the stomach or an alkali in the intestine help to digest the food and then finally an enzymatic process which breaks down the larger molecules like protein fat carbohydrate vitamin minerals etc into smaller molecules which can be easily absorbed and anything going wrong with either of all these systems and processes can cause indigestion and often the problem is not in the system or in the body but in the mind as well friends then these common gi problems which have been so very well discussed by my colleagues are very important in routine practice in all age groups i hope you are enjoying this youtube channel related to steer principle and now next series will be related to abdominal distension which is also a common problem and the next video will be dealt by dr shridhar ganpati and he will talk on abdominal distension thank you